Hello. Well, today we are going to paint this scene. Um, this is the scene that most of you guys will be seeing in the south of France. I believe this is Pizanas. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but uh, it's definitely in the south of France. As you can see, there's some beautiful scenery, um, these old buildings, this old uh, footbridge, um, the boats there. It looks like the water taxi, which we're going to be painting. Uh, and it's a beautiful bluebird day. It's a very um, bright day. Um, there's no clouds in the sky. And let's get into the compositional sketch. All right, so why do we do a compositional sketch? Uh, well, we do it because we want to get a feeling of the patterns that the scene is creating, um, the lights and the darks, the contrasts, uh, the points of interest. What interests me about um, cropping this scene this way is that you have a strong, actually a couple of strong diagonal shapes. You have a counter diagonals are always good in a composition. Uh, the roof line and the bridge, as you can see, they're going in opposite directions. That's always a good thing for a composition. It just shows um, just a little visual diversity. Um, the trees are just really, um, at this point, are uh, just indications. They are in the picture. And I'm just creating a few little, uh, little things of detail, indicating the detail or implying the detail. Um, some of the shadows. Uh, again, this is not a this is not a, a, a finished sketch. This is really just um, just so we can get our bearings on what our painting is going to look like in a in a line form. Um, yes, there are shadows, and we're going to get some lights and darks for sure. But it's mainly to see how everything looks in a linear fashion. And if we like our design and we feel it's like strong enough to spend the hour painting this, then we will do that. And I think I like what I, you know, I sketched out here. Um, there's like a nice dark uh, shape in the foreground, which frames the picture. All right, my surface is a 9 by 12 MDF oil primed canvas. Um, I usually prime my canvases with um, uh, Gamblin oil ground. You could use any kind of, you could use a, a oil primer uh, that you can get from Home Depot. That would work fine. And uh, so we can reference the picture on the upper right hand corner. Um, now, as we're doing this, as we're drawing our shapes in, right, and getting our shadows, um, there should be times in the painting where, okay, this might be like 10 minutes into the painting. Um, we want we don't want to spend too much time in the drawing um, although we want to be specific uh, we don't want to we don't want to go too detailed in our drawing we want to go we want to just get the big the big big shapes okay um, is there a lot of line absolutely it's linear at this point just like the sketch was until we start to fill in those those half tones and shadow areas like we're doing now okay um, what's kind of nice about this composition is the boat is sort of like checkerboarded against the darks um, you can see some interesting reflections which helps you know with interest um, and again the uh, well actually let, let me just uh, just say that the line that I'm using is a neutral. It's burnt umber and ultramarine blue. It kind of is creating like a slate gray, um, which is a good neutral color. You can use any color. If you want to use burnt umber, you want to use raw umber, anything that's going to create a line where you can get a little darker and a little lighter. So now that's our picture. Uh, we're going to pull back on that. Now, at this stage, this is when you should take your photograph of your scene. Why are you going to do it now and not in the beginning? Because now you're painting. So what you're doing now is going to be the, the image that you're going to record. So I suggest taking the photograph at this stage. Not at the blocking stage, um, but now when you're actually massing in the, in the big values and the, and the colors. So I'm starting from back 
and I'm going to work my way to the front. So the sky is always the first thing. The sky is going to key in the whole painting. Again, you have an hour to paint this, especially on a bright sunny day. Um, now, if let's say you don't finish it within an hour, try to get the big shapes in as best you can. Don't go for any detail. Just look at the big, sh exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, this painting is obviously sped up. Uh, it's a quarter, it's quarter speed. Um, as far as the colors I'm using right now, it's um, that color is like a yellow ochre with some burnt umber. The uh, roof was. Uh, it was still yellow ochre. I think there was a little cadmium orange in there. Um, this is actually the same color I was using for the line. It has that the blue, uh, ultramarine blue in there. Um, the greens, I use sap green. I don't um, rely on mixing my blues. I like having greens. So I'm a big uh, fan of bringing green paint with me. If it, even if it's just one green, I. I prefer sap green because it's pretty versatile. Um, it's kind of middle tone, but it can be darkened with ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Uh, here, I'm just um, trying to get a little bit more accurate in some of my shapes. Um, as you can see, everything that I'm drawing, I'm just drawing with a the brush. There was no pencil involved in this process. However, if let's say you feel a little bit more comfortable drawing or you, you just feel that you can draw faster than you can paint um, these shapes or actually, actually the, the, the step just before. Um, yeah, you can definitely do that on the, on the, on the canvas or canvas board or, or panel like this. Um, it'll definitely take. Um, all right, so I'm trying to mass in. I'm seeing that there's some cool tones I'm actually seeing like hints of purple, probably just the way that the uh, shadows are angled. Whatever the case may be, what you want to do is if you really look, I would squint a lot to get the um, to get the values, but also open your eyes real wide to blend in all that color information. Okay, so that's that's what I would do. I apologize for the glare right there. That's not as as light as it, it looks there. Um, just at the peak of the uh, building. All right, so darker color. So basically that, what I just painted there is burnt umber, ultramarine blue. <coughs> Excuse me. And here, um, that's that was basically the same color. I'm adding a little bit of the sky color because now we have some of that sky reflecting into the water. Mainly the color of this, uh, of this river or creek is like a green and I think what it, what's happening is it's picking up some of the reflection uh, it could be a little on the murky side too I'm not sure but um, but it's definitely it's recording as green there's actually um, and that I'm talking about that little area if you look at the inset photograph you're gonna see more actually more blue uh, to the to the right and if you choose to draw paint the whole this whole scene that's fine just know that you have to do it within an hour. So what I was doing here is because I knew that if I took, if I tried to paint too much, chances are I wouldn't be able to get everything down. Um, but uh, again, you're going to be taking photographs of everything, even the things that you're not painting, um, just for future references. Sometimes these can work as color studies, uh, or they can be paintings on their own. It's always good to have a painting that you've painted um, at the place you visited. You know, there's, there's something uh, special about that. Um, now, I'm darkening that area in the front. That's creating a nice, um, it's creating a nice frame for the picture. And I can see that the blue actually came down. That re uh, that's all the reflection, probably, again, from the building, from some trees. There's some trees on the... Uh, <clears throat> along the the uh, the bridge, the footbridge there, <clears throat> and um, just kind of plotting in the shadow shapes here and there, and just trying to get a little bit more variety in in the uh, tree shapes. Um, I don't go crazy because I can always go back, and that's another thing too. You can always go back um, at the end of the painting, and uh, 
and fill in the details. Don't 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 fixate on one thing. Um, try to get again. Just try to get the major shapes. Try to record the color. Uh, I know that's asking a lot, but try to get uh, try to get the color notes um, of all the things that you see as accurately as possible, because this is about recording nature. Uh, and I mean, even though we're painting mostly man-made shapes here, we're painting sunlight on the boat, we're painting sunlight on the building, um, sunlight reflecting into the water. So there's a lot of things happening here. And I know that's, that's a lot, but look at the, look at the colors. Uh, a lot of times what I do when I'm painting outside, when I get into the opaque segment, which is now, um, I'll mix, if I see that there's a a lot of one color, I'll actually mix that color with my palette so I know I have enough to cover and I, I don't, it's not that you have to do this, this is a very small um, uh, board so I don't really need a ton of paint. Um, usually when you play in air paint, chances are you're not going to be um, painting anything really big. I mean unless you're going to go back to the area again, um, you'll never get even a quarter of the canvas filled if you if you work any larger than say 18 by 24 which is still very big for plain air painting not to say that it's not been done people do it all the time but um, when you're trying to get a scene you want to you just want to work small it's more concentrated uh, you can mix less color and get really good effects which is like what we're trying to do here now so as you can see on the lower right hand side we're picking up the skylight that actually can be and i think is in the painting a little darker than the sky color usually uh, water reflected is usually slightly darker or anything that's reflecting is always a little darker not a lot just a little than the thing it's reflecting. So that's a, that's a general rule. So this way you can tell it's, it, it is the reflection by the darker, the darker shapes. Now here I'm just kind of plotting in some of the windows. As you can see, I'm not getting too deep, you know, too crazy. I'm shaping them up a little bit by just painting some of the local color around just to edge out the windows. Um, the colors I'm using here, pretty much the same colors I use for the underpaint that's burnt umber I actually did use it's burnt umber ultramarine blue but to get that slight purple if it if it's registering as purple on your screen it's just a little hint of alizarin crimson which is if you can see off to the right hand corner you'll see that a little crit alizarin crimson right there by the white now I like to put that in because sometimes that um, shadows on a sunny day now this is a, again another general rule. On a sunny day, the light is warm, okay? And this reverts back to when we were little kids in school uh, and we had our box of Crayola crayons and we went to draw the sun. Obviously the sun's gonna be yellow and the sun does have a warm tint to it. Conversely, the shadows are gonna be cool. So the cooler the shadows and the warmer the light, the more of the feeling of light you get so if you use so it's like when, when we're doing a when we're doing a reverse color um a revert meaning you have a warm light you're going to have a cool shadow okay cool light warm shadow and that usually happens in like um, northern light exposure areas like in studios you, you see that happen often everything kind of looks like it's a little neutral all right so i am adding a little bit of the uh, cerulean blue which was the color of the sky i probably forgot to tell you that um that's a cerulean with probably a little bit of ultramarine blue just a little bit um i wanted to try to keep it a nice chromatic blue uh, and the cerulean blue actually has a little bit of it gives you the feeling of yellow like a yellowy it has a little yellow to it so it's actually what would be considered a warm uh, a, a warm color 
uh, or a warm tint. It's a warm blue. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but you have warm blues and you have cool blues. Ultramarine blue is probably one of the coolest blues that you can find. All right. Um, now, I'm painting the little canopy on the uh, water taxi. Um, this whole scene, I believe, it looks like to me, it's a little outdoor cafe. And um, it probably just went on a little tour, a little water tour. And there's some chairs that look red. Uh, and we have that, uh, of course, there's the, the bright blue boats. If you want to pull back a little bit, like in the inset picture, you can paint those too. I'm just painting little, um, you know, trying to fix the drawing a little bit. Looks like uh, I have to um, work on getting my drawing fixed a little bit. But you can see that I'm not really, it's not a detailed image, right? It's, this is, there's nothing here that I painted um, that I didn't paint with the exception of little areas where I couldn't get into with my, my brush, which is basically, it's, that was a flat right there, that brush right there. I'm doing all my line work with the flat brush, just using the flat part. And if you notice, this brush is not a, um, it's not a detail brush, and it's not a very expensive brush, all right? Now here, this brush <laughs> as well, it's just that this brush was new, um, and it's behaving. So I'm using probably the cheapest brushes known to man on this picture. And the only reason for that is, is that they're new and they, and they, they actually, you know, they be, it's a brush that behaves. It's usually the best brush, right? So um, the, the Firenze brush is something, I think it's a loft brush, but they're actually not bad. They're, um, out of all of them, I find that they are probably the most versatile. Um, I just like a brush that has a point, that's going to come to a, a strong point. You can go to any store. Rosemary brushes have nice uh, flat brushes. Synthetic brushes are great. Um, they hold up. So usually in, in plein air painting, um, well, at least I don't use them that often, but uh, you don't really need to use sable brushes. You want to try to use the... Um, you know, the brushes that are going to take a beating um, that are uh, a little on the stiff side, and this one is, it, because it's not, uh, it's not a bristle brush, um, but it's not, it's not a soft or sable brush either. So it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, you, don't, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to have something this small and you're working with, let's say, a hog hair brush. Um, you're just going to, you're actually going to be picking up too much paint. But this, that brush that I'm, I'm using, I actually could see I pretty much used this for the entire painting. Um, masked in the sky. Uh, I don't like taking out a lot of brushes because I end up not using them and I'm just carrying too much with me. So um, keep it simple. Right? Um, and you kind of look at these things as studies. Uh, but every once in a while you might, you know, you might look out and get a nice painting. Um, this painting, for sure, is, is really a study. Um, but uh, they have their own little, a little intrinsic uh, charm to them, too. So here, probably this is probably the most detail I'm doing here with my little, uh, my little cheap brush. Um, I'm just really making shapes, right? In fact, probably don't want to have a brush that has a perfect point. Um, because I want to make these erratic shapes. So sometimes old brushes, I never throw out my, if you look at my studio, I'm looking, I'm sitting in here now, I have all these brushes that just look awful, but they still work. Um, a lot of them I kind of alter to get tree shapes, things like that, um, to help me dabble paint on. So never throw out your brushes. There's always, there's always a good use for them. And you can always clean them too. Um, let's see. So, yeah, so now, now this is probably as detailed as I'm going with this painting. So you, as you can see, I'm, we're getting close to the end. Um, I'm adding some cool tones to the shadows. And uh, some warm 
actually cool, cool cool areas here some you know that reflected blue which is really just white reflected in the water that wouldn't be and you don't want to make your reflection as bright as the hull of the boat um, it would look unreal so we're almost done here guys so um, we're gonna call it a day on this one that's this, this painting took an hour thanks for watching uh, hope to see you all there bye